Um, again, as we talked about, we have y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, vertex form. y equals a times x squared plus bx plus c, standard form. Now, do we know if any of these are the vertex? No. So guess what? This really isn't really going to help us that much. Because what's nice about this one, we like to use this form when we know what the vertex is, when we can apply our h and our k. In this case, though, we have three points, none of which we know is the vertex. So one thing we can do in this case is what we can do is set, a, set up what we call a system, what we can set up is a system of equations. If you guys remember in unit one, we learned how to solve using substitution and elimination. We're going to come up to the same thing. So let me just show you what I mean. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in each of these three points into this equation for x and y. Right? These all represent x and y. Everybody follows me? OK. So if I plug them all for x and y, I have 3 equals a times 0 squared plus um, 0 times, sorry, b times 0 plus c. Over here, next one, I have 2 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c. And the last one, I end up having 3 equals a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. Does everybody see what I did? I'm not using vertex form in this one. I'm using standard form. And the reason why I'm using standard form is now let's go and simplify what this is. Well, this all goes to 0, right? So you could say c equals 3. Here, this goes ahead and simplifies to the equation. 2 equals a plus b plus c. And then this one simplifies to 3 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. Now, in this class, we did not cover how to solve a system of equations with three variables. However, what's nice about this is we know what the value of c is, right? You guys agree with me? So guess what? I can plug in, I can replace c with 3. So if I replace 3, let's just use that 3. If c equals 3, I can replace c with 3. And then I have a system of equations. So what I'm going to do, yes? How do you know that c equals 3? Well, because when you plug in the point 3 and 0, 0 in for the x's, 3 in for the y, 0, 0, c. c equals 3. Make sense? Those all go to 0. So now, if I go ahead and solve each of those, I get my variables on the same side. I get this equation. Negative 1 equals a plus b divided by 0 equals 4a plus 2b. Do you guys remember when we did systems of equations like this? Now, the reason why I'm going to, why we like, why I'm going to give this problem is, if you guys remember on your first unit one test, did I actually assess that you could do s s elimination or substitution? No, it was like all these stupid word problems, right? Well, guess what? Here's an opportunity for you to show me that you can solve using substitution or elimination. So remember, you could either solve for A or B and plug it into the other equation. However, in this example, I would like to use elimination. Um, my preference would be to eliminate the b. Remember, when you're doing elimination, you want to get the variable having the same coefficient. I like to always do posit one positive, one negative. So therefore, I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 2. By doing that, I now obtain positive 2 equals negative 2a plus negative 2b all over 0 equals 4a plus 2b. Do you guys see that b both has the same coefficients? One's positive, one's negative? You guys see that? Yes? Now I add them vertically, and I get 2 equals 2a. So now to find a, I simply just divide by 2. a equals 1. 
then once I know what A is, I can plug 1 back into one of my equations to solve for B. So I'll go to negative 1 equals A plus B. Negative 1 equals A plus B. Subtract 1, subtract 1. Negative 2 equals B. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I know what C is. I know what A is. And I now know what B is. So now I can write the equation of the line. y equals 1 times x squared minus 2x plus 3. And do I really need to write the 1 in a? No, but I'll just leave it there so you guys can see that.